Remember that scene in the movie Trading Places where Eddie Murphy and Dan Aykroyd bankrupted those two old rich guys by cornering the frozen orange juice market? Well, it turns out that a guy actually once did make millions of dollars by doing pretty much exactly as they did in the movie, only instead of orange juice, he bought onions. Millions upon millions of onions. Besides getting filthy rich in his clever little scheme, he inspired the Onion Futures Act, which banned selling onion futures in the United States. And no, we really couldn't be making this stuff up. Prior to his stint on the commodities market as the king of onions, Vincent Kasuga was an unimposing 5-foot, 4-inch tall onion farmer who had turned an unwanted 5,000-acre patch of dirt into a veritable onion-filled Garden of Eden. However, just making money growing onions apparently wasn't enough excitement for Kasuga, and in the early 1950s he turned his attention to trading onion futures through the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, colloquially known as the Merc. Before we get too far ahead of ourselves, we should note that a few years prior to this, Kasuga had tried to trade wheat futures on the commodities market and screwed up so badly that he brought his family to the brink of bankruptcy. Kasuga's wife made him promise to never again trade after his failed trades resulted in them having to borrow money from a family friend just to stay afloat. Ignoring the pleas of his wife, Kasuga soon went back to trading, only this time, instead of trading wheat, he stuck with what he knew and began trading onions. If you're curious about why onions were such a lucrative market, this has a lot to do with the limited storability of onions, which are typically planted and harvested at very specific times of the year, which meant that for traders, as the price of onions had the potential to fluctuate wildly on a nearly day-to-day -day basis. For example, when the onions were harvested, they typically commanded a high price due to the fact that the market had been virtually devoid of them for many months and remaining stores of the previous crop were rapidly spoiling. However, this inevitably led to many farmers flooding the market with their harvest at the same time in a desperate attempt to get the best price, in turn dramatically lowering the price. The market for onions was so potentially lucrative that at one point in time, about 20% of all trading that occurred in the Merck involved onions. As an onion farmer himself, Kasuga held a considerable advantage over the other traders, and he very quickly became a rich man buying and selling onion futures. For those not familiar, a future is a financial contract obliging the buyer to purchase an asset or the seller to sell an asset at a predetermined future date and price. In other words, Kasuga was buying onion futures in the hopes that the price would go up when that date arrived so that he could sell them for a profit. To help facilitate this, Kasuga wasn't averse to shady dealings to turn a profit. For example, one year, knowing that his own crop was coming along nicely, Kasuga surmised that the rest of the market would follow suit, and hence when the time to sell came, the market would be full of onions and the price would drop too much. So, in an incredibly sneaky and probably illegal move, Kasuga bribed an official at the Chicago weather office to issue a severe frost warning, which would lead to many onion crops failing. There was no such frost coming, but when this news leaked, people began panic buying onions, driving up the price, and thus making Kasuga lots of money. As shady as this move was, it doesn't even come close to what Kasuga did in 1955 when he teamed up with his friend Sam Siegel. Siegel owned a cold storage facility, which he used to store, amongst other things, onions. Between the two men, they effectively had the financial and physical capability to buy and store almost every onion in Chicago. So, well, that's exactly what they did. In the autumn of 1955, after almost a year of frantic buying, Siegel and Kasuga owned 98% of the onions in Chicago. It's about 30 million pounds worth of onions. With literally the entire supply of onions under their control, the men were able then to artificially inflate the price of onions to about $2.75 a sack by severely restricting the supply. After they had inflated the price of onions, the men then enacted the most sinister and brilliant part of their scheme. They began short-selling onion futures, which essentially meant that they were selling onions in the hope that the price would fall, allowing them to buy them back for a fraction of the cost, making potentially a huge profit in the process so long as the price fell. 
well. Because the men owned just about every onion in the city, they could guarantee that the price of onions would fall simply by flooding the market with the millions of onions they were holding in reserve as soon as the sales were final. By March of 1956, the price of onions fell so much that they effectively became worthless. From $2.75 per 50-pound bag to $0.10 cents per bag in the span of just six months. This meant that the onions were now worth less than the sacks they were being sold in. Dozens of onion farmers were now experiencing a new way that onions can make your eyes water as they went bankrupt and millions of rotting and worthless onions ended up being dumped across the city. As for Kasuga and Siegel, they got away completely scot-free because they'd technically not committed a crime. As a direct result of Kasuga's actions, though, the US government enacted the Onions Futures Act in 1958, making it illegal to trade onion futures. Perhaps the most curious part of all of this is that Vincent Kasuga was, by all accounts, a really nice guy when he wasn't ruining people on the onion market. For example, he was a hugely respected and loved philanthropist almost his entire life, and the lion's share of the money he earns through trading actually went straight to some charity or another. He was also well known for showering friends and family with lavish gifts. Kasuga was also a very devout Catholic, and he donated so much money to help fund the church's charitable activities that he was given a private audience with three different popes. To top it all off, Kasuga was so loved by his community that Pine Island, the place he called his home, voted him their Citizen of the Year in 1987. If you're wondering, after Kasuga made his vast fortune, rather Rather than retiring to a tropical island, he opened up a restaurant called The Jolly Onion Inn, where he worked as a chef. And now for a bonus fact. Ever wonder why onions make your eyes water? Well, want to know more. Onions, along with many other plants in the allium species, garlic is another popular one, they absorb sulfur from the soil. When onions are chopped, it ends up breaking cells within the onion, which releases certain enzymes. These enzymes then react with the sulfur, creating amino acid sulfoxides. These, in turn, create the highly unstable synpropanethyl S-oxide, which is a combination of sulfuric acid, sulfur dioxide, and hydrogen sulfide. When the substance in a gaseous state comes into contact with the moisture in your eye, it triggers a burning sensation via the ciliary nerve. Tears in the eyes are regulated by the lacrimal glands, which is situated just above your eyelids. When the brain gets a message that there is an irritant in the eyes, such as the previously mentioned synpropanethyl S-oxide, which gives a burning sensation, it then kicks the lacrimal glands into overdrive, trying to flush the irritant out of your eyes with tears. Cooked onions won't give the same effect because the process of cooking the onions deactivates the enzymes needed to make the synpropanethyl S-oxide. This means you can safely chew the cooked onions without getting all teary-eyed. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do smash that like button below. And if you're looking for more from me, why not check out another channel I work on called Geographics. It's a geography channel. I'm going to link to that below. And as always, thank you for watching.